Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's try our first example here. We have what we call a half wave rectified voltage. So we have a voltage source. Here's the equation def defining the voltage as a function of time, 10 times the sine of t. We have a resistor there of 10 ohms on the circuit. And you can see how we only allow the positive portion of the voltage to go through. We probably have some sort of diode there. We ignore the small diode effect on the voltage, the voltage drop across the diode effect, and let's say that that's the waveform that we have. We now we're trying to find the RMS voltage and the average power. So the average or the RMS voltage is found in the very same way as we find the RMS current. We take the square root of the sum of all the sample points squared divided by the total number of sample points, and then if we then turn that into an integral, we have an integral from zero to the end of the period of the voltage squared dt divided by the total period. And since the voltage is defined as 10 times the sine of t, 10 times squared can be taken outside the integral sign, we have sine squared of t dt. Now how do we proceed from here? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the 10 square out, and so then we can say that VRMS is equal to 10 times the uh, square root of 1 over 2 pi, and now we're going to integrate over the sine square of t dt. Now, of course, it's easier to, to change that into the following. So we're going to take the integral of 1 half times 1 minus the cosine of, two, whoop, of 2t, of yeah, twice the angle, times dt, like this. And now also notice that if we're going to integrate over the entire period, since we don't have any value for the, for the voltage here, we only need to integrate from 0 to pi. So that would be from 0 to pi, like this. Notice the 1 half can come outside the integral sign. Let me extend this a little bit further. So this is equal to 10 times the square root of 1 over 4 pi. So simply by taking the 1 over half out, we can now integrate this. So this becomes equal to the integral of 1 times dt, which is simply t, and then minus, since we're going to integrate the cosine of 2t, we need 1 over 2. So we have minus 1 over 2. The integral of the cosine is the sine, sine of 2t, and that will be evaluated from 0 to pi, only half the period, again, the second half of the period, we don't have any value on the function. All right, what does that look like? VRMS is equal to 10 times the square root of 1 over 4 pi. Now what happens when we plug in the limits? When we plug in the upper limit, we get uh, t becomes pi minus, when we plug in pi here, we get the sine of 2 pi, the sine of 2 pi is 0, so we get pi minus 0, and from that we're going to subtract, when we plug in the lower limit, plug in the lower limit, we get 0 minus the sine of 0 is 0 as well. So you can see that the only surviving part will be when we plug in the upper limit into the variable t right there. And now you can see that if we, uh, we everything else is 0, so that cancels out, pi divided by pi, that cancels out, so this is equal to 10 times the square root of 1 over 4, which is equal to 10 times 1 half, which is equal to 5. So that's the RMS voltage, the root mean square voltage, the effective voltage, it would be the same voltage, uh, the, the effective voltage in essence, that means that we can replace the alternating voltage source by a single DC voltage, a voltage that supplies a constant 5 volts that gives the exact same result in the circuit. So in other words, the VRMS is simply a DC voltage of 5 volts. Now we need to find the average power. We found that the average power is equal to IRMS squared times R. And then using Ohm's law, we realize that IRMS is equal to VRMS divided by R. So if we replace IRMS by this, we get this is equal to VRMS squared divided by R squared times R. One of the R's cancels out, so the average power can be found by taking VRMS squared 
divided by the resistance. So in this case, the VRMS was 5 volts. We squared that, divided by the resistance in the circuit, which is 10 ohms. 25 divided by 10, which is equal to 2.5 watts. And so the average power delivered to the resistor in the circuit is 2.5 watts. That's accomplished by having an RMS voltage or effective voltage of 5 volts. And that is due to finding the what we call the effective voltage of the circuit by doing the integral over the halfway rectified voltage. And those are the results. That's how it's done.